perfectly on contour. This is contour farming. Everything's on contour. It will slow the erosion down to the bottom of the valley. But using the techniques from key line design, starting with finding your key point, making a key line, which is con on contour to the key point, and paralleling up, paralleling down, we then start to make decisions. And what's more important than do this, do that, is that you have the ability to know what are your goals and your objectives, why you want those as goals and objectives, and how are you going to accomplish that instead of just merely parroting something step by step. You may want to take your water from here and zigzag it all across the landscape. You may want to take your water like that last slide that I passed to and I came back from that just spreads it out to the ridges. You may want to disobey either altogether and move it from over there all the way over to here. It's all arbitrary, but these principles and how you put it together uh, all fall into place nicely. So a goal, a goal is to rehydrate the landscape so you have more water available for more productivity. This three inches of water that landed on this guy's farm next door and came roared through the center of the valley in the middle of the night uh, is water that he has lost. He cannot use that for increased productivity in the landscape. The water that you guys saw last night spreading out towards that ridge has had time to soak in. It's slowed down. It's not erosive. It goes in rodent holes. That's water that I can store in a soil column to feed my, my trees. You can get more productivity out of the landscape. If he's in an area with 12 inches of rain, he can get more growth in that area than 12 inches of rain uh, will supply anybody else with. Because you're taking that water and you're not letting it go away. You ever have overland water flow at all? Yeah. Yeah, so why? It's a, it's a huge waste of resources. Probably the most destructive force known to mankind. It's even more destructive than the nuclear weapons that uh, Oppenheimer invented. Every time a raindrop <coughs> strikes uh, bare soil, it's an amazingly destructive force. You know, so what happened when I shook all this water? Everything goes into solution. The finest of the fines stay in solution. And as you guys walked this morning, was it going squish, squish, squish on the ground? Okay, so that squish, squish, the water is in a sheet. What didn't run on the surface, 2.30 in the morning, there was a river running down the middle. There was a lot of surface flow. The squish, squish that you feel, all this water is in a sheet laying on the, on the shape of the, of the planet, and it's moving slowly towards the low spots, gradually towards the low spots, some of it soaking in. And the finest of the fines stay in suspension for a long time. This water is still cloudy. It's still, excuse me, there's still tiny soil particles in that. Now, in part, that's how our soil washes away and washes away. Even on a perennial grass pasture that looks to you or me to be perfectly 100% vegetated with perennial ground cover, if you can look down and see bare black dirt, you're getting erosion. You're getting this sheet erosion. It's happening slowly, insidiously over time. And of course, there's mechanical forces. With a little bit of, uh, what is this? Owen Hadlitzel. Um, this was his whirlwind farm project. Uh, one year later, this is what it's like. Now think also, we'll see this happen uh, out here, and especially in the pepper patch. As the sun comes out, uh, we know that this, this water splashed things up. What settled out at the bottom first? Sand. The sand, the silt. And the finest of the fine settle on top. And what are the finest of the fine particles? Clay. So now we get this clay surface. What happens when you take wet clay and you bake it? Pottery. You get pottery. So you guys really see that? We might have to like get down there. Because that this is all cracked, just like pottery shards. But we also don't want to cook that thing on. But we also don't want to cook people. Here we go. So now what you have, all of the agricultural fields right around here, right now, are in the process of turning the surface of the soil into pottery. What happens when rain hits pottery? It runs off. It'll rehydrate some of it, but the majority of it's going to run off. So annual agriculture, tillage agriculture, bare exposed soil agriculture makes pottery on the surface of the soil, uh, and the water will run off, won't penetrate as, as fast. So then just one year later, after... Uh, doing, he did the key line subsoiler on the key line pattern, which we'll go over. This happened. No seeding. He did, they did no seeding on this, he said, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that's pretty extreme. Now think what happened here. Now we've got all this grass. Now we have, if nothing else, we have a carbon sponge that the roots and the tops uh, are going to attract and hold their own water. Now,
This is the tool that I think has had the most dynamic impact on the whole farm. It's the subsoiler. 